Time to test. Let's get after it with Governor Gavin Newsom. Gov, thank you very much for taking the opportunity. Great to be here. Uh, full disclosure. Yes, sir. Uh, you and I talk. I am very yeah. impressed by your acumen on the party and the Thanks. state of play. Yeah. Uh, it's an unusual quality for a number one, right? Yeah. You know, you're a governor, you're head of state, but you see the game very well about what's going on. And I appreciate you coming on here and giving us the opportunity. Great to be with you, especially in studio. It's nice to have you. So uh, you're here in New York. It's UN week. You're here for as part of the Clinton Global Initiative. Yep. yep. And it's interesting because I'm watching the former president, yep. um, one of the most brilliant men I've ever seen in the sphere. And it's an interesting analogy to what's being said about the current president, Biden. Bill Clinton is sharp. He's smart. He cares. Right. He does not seem like he's ready to lead the country. He is younger than Biden. Is that a legitimate basis of criticism? Uh, Fair point. I mean, look, I, we're getting down the rabbit hole on the age, and I've answered this question in a hundred different ways. And of course, the immediate pivot in my party is the understandable pivot. Look at the performance. Look at the success of the last two and a half years. Leave the judgment to the American people on age, which is fair game. And the president, I was with him last night, I think had two or three uh, uh, lines on this, uh, where he's obviously getting more and more comfortable with acknowledging the obvious, the conversation we're all having in this country. But at the, the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about someone that could put the best team on the uh, uh, on the field. I'm for someone who actually could produce the best results. And I've seen two and a half years of a master class of result making. I've seen someone who's also been doing deals uh, and is a deal maker with the Republican Party on issues that I never thought both parties would come together on, from infrastructure to the Chips and Science Act to what he was able to do on the debt ceiling mm -hmm. itself and trillion dollars of debt reduction that was part of that deal on gun safety. So I'm really proud of the president. I'm proud of what he's done and I'm proud of his team. And you will know this well because uh, of your own experiences in politics. It's not about the guy or gal on the white horse. It's about those around the table. And he's brought together an extraordinary team. And that's why I'm a team player all in on Biden. So let's talk about that. There are two issues uh, with what you just said. The first one is that the message is only true if you get to make it. And whether it's age or stage or the people around him, yep. the Democrats, I think, are rightly sanctioned for allowing the Republicans to dictate the narrative right now. Yeah. What you're talking about, we almost never hear from Democrats. The Republicans are saying, look at the grocery store, look at the gas pumps, yeah. and look at basically just how he performs. And you're losing on that argument. Correct. Why are the Democrats allowing the right. narrative to be taken from you? It's long been a source of deep anxiety for me, so much so that I started doing ads in Florida to sort of counter my frustration. I mean, rather than pointing fingers, I started to iterate, did billboards in seven states uh, around the issue of reproductive freedom, uh, focused the same in, in, in places from like I did full page ads, in fact, uh, down in Texas. My point is, I'm trying, I'm going to red states, I'm trying to make the case, I'm listening, I'm learning, I'm iterating, I'm out here uh, with the Clinton Global Initiative trying to absorb and just try uh, to reconcile the fact that, yeah, we have a messaging problem. We've been on the receiving end of CRT, DEI, ESG, all three. Whatever has three letters, we seem to be on the receiving end. No one understands what woke is. Even Trump himself said, I don't even know how to define the term. Uh, but they're winning on the messaging. We're reacting. Trans issues, all these issues. They sell fear and panic on the border, inflation, on crime, and they sell calm and indifference on issues like climate change and public health. And so our job is to get on the offense and to redefine the terms of debate. That's what campaigns are about. That's why I'm actually excited as we turn on the campaign apparatus. We haven't even started and we get back on the field and all of us Democrats in positions of, of, of you know, importance, moral authority, those Democrats that have no formal authority. And we get out and we make the case to the American people why this president and this administration deserve a second term. So message is my first point of confusion. Yep. Messenger is an obvious one, but you know, I have one of you at home. Uh, you're a sitting governor. I have a former sitting governor yeah. at home. <laughs> and when I would talk about helping the national, I'd say, well, be careful because there's a line. If you believe it that much, then it should be you. And yeah. that's how I feel about you, Gov, which is I get that you want to help your team. Yeah. But why not you? If you really care that much about the issues, I know you say you're not running, yeah. which is yeah. unusual to put a period at it. Yeah. Exclamation why, if you point. care, why don't you run if you Because I care. believe in this guy. Actually, you know, you know why? You think Joe Biden is the I, best the Democrats can do. And, and I hope you can differentiate because your BS meter is one of the best because you've been around this all your life. I don't like this guy. I have deep respect, reverence for Joe Biden as a person, his character, his decency, and his capacity to do great things. 
That's why I'm not worthy of that conversation. This guy deserves it. And we, as, as members of the party, deserve to have us back more forcefully. And none of the nonsense, all those, you, you, these quiet conversations you've been in, we've all been in, folks talking about the back, that become headlines. And we're all chasing that right now. We've got to get on the team. We've got to get this, this guy reelected. And we've got to stop all the navel gazing and the hand wringing. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.